Hello, everybody. Hope you're all well. Welcome to Sarah's Kitchen. Senora, pon en esta app, por favor. We are going to go live right now. And while well, we are live with YouTube, we're going to go live with Instagram also. And I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to show you guys how to make my lima bean and dill rice. And I have one of my favorite ways to make this rice is bring boiling water, water to boil, not bring boiling water, add a pinch of salt. So I'm simultaneously live with YouTube and Instagram. We have boiling water. We're going to add a handful of salt to it. You can do that before it boils. That'll actually expedite the boiling process, if I can speak. And my cake is in the oven. Wow, my cake looks gorgeous. It's doing its thing. So now the water is absolutely boiling. Check that out. Nice and hot. And what I'm going to do is put our rice. You can use brown rice, white rice. I'm using brown rice. I just literally wash it. If you have time, you can soak it. And we're going to keep this on high heat for it to boil. Now this process, there's been so many confusions as to what is happening. We're going to boil this rice till it becomes al dente, kind of like kind of like pasta. And then I have my frozen lima beans or fava beans, whatever you whatever you like to call them. And I have my jar of dry dill. Dill is a must have in my kitchen anyways. This is going to come to a boil. When it becomes al dente, you're going to get rid of this water. We're going to pour out the water. We're going to take the rice out, okay, in a colander or whatever, however you like. And then we're going to add it to the rice cooker without any more liquid. And we're going to let the rice cooker make it into this perfect rice pilaf. Now I'm doing this, I know I've done this many times on Instagram Live, but YouTube needed to have a video. So many of you were asking me for the tutorial, and I have to put it back on there. This we're going to pop open. Let me get a scissor. Colander, colander. I love when you guys correct me. Here we go. We're really cooking in this kitchen, and it's nighttime, and it's dinner time. Now, you don't have to defrost this frozen at all. You use it as is, and you basically what you do is you layer. Now, you can do this with lentils. You can do this with black-eyed peas. You can use any vegetable, beans, dry herbs, fresh herbs that you like. The process is really layering. So you put one layer of rice, one layer of your beans or herbs, another layer of rice, and then you cover it and you let the steam with inside the rice cooker cook your rice. That's what the process is. I know that I have my lentils in there on YouTube, but I had to add this lima bean. This is completely vegetarian, and I always make the crispy rice in the bottom with yogurt, but tonight, because we're gonna have a vegetarian theme, I'm gonna leche de almendra, por favor. No, I know. Because we're doing a vegetarian theme and this is completely going to be vegetarian, you can tell I did not sleep enough last night. We're going to coat the bottom of our rice cooker with oil and almond milk instead of yogurt. So why yogurt or almond milk? It just adds a 
thick cushion, um, some dairy or non-dairy milk. We're going to add some almond milk to it, and that will give it that beautiful color for your taggy or the crispy rice in the bottom. We're going to add some avocado oil to the bottom of the pot. If you do not have a rice cooker, you do not need a rice cooker. You can do this on stovetop. So I added some oil to the bottom of this, and then I'm adding, well, depending on the size of your rice cooker, enough liquid because what will happen is, this will steam up from underneath the rice and just cover the entire rice while it's in here and it'll cook it through and through. Now, if you were to do yogurt, then you would have to liquefy it, which means add water to it to get it in a thinner consistency. But since we're doing almond milk right now and we're being vegetarian, we don't want to put dairy, vegan, vegetarian. We did almond milk. This rice is going to take 8 to 10, sometimes 12 minutes, depending on your liking. If you are doing this and you notice that it's still too hard for you, let it go a couple minutes more. But I got to tell you, you got to try. And if it becomes too mushy, too soft, then next time you remember and you pick it when it's a little bit more al dente. Right now, it's really hard. This was two cups of rice I put in this pan to soft boil it, hard boil it. And you check your grains. I can, I can visually see it's not ready. <clears throat> and I can taste, because I just sampled it, that it needs more salt. Rice pilaf is such a favorite in my house. I added half a handful to that one. So it got a good amount of salt. Don't forget you're not really seasoning your rice. You're seasoning the water. There's a lot of water in here. So, yeah, plain rice is just, just salt food is what rice is, I think. You can accompany this with any food, any region, any country, and it's just good. It is just yummy, yummy soul food. The other way I check is if I don't want to try it, the grains, once you're boiling it, will grow and expand. They'll suck up that liquid and expand. So let it keep going. If you don't have enough water, over your rice, it might take a little longer. Now what you can do is add some dill. I put my dill, once I open the plastic bag, I put it in a tight jar. That's what this jar is. And I like to reuse my jars from, I don't know, tomato sauces. I do, I'm a cook like that. Just put some dill in the bottom with your almond milk. And then what you can also add to the bottom while this is happening is maybe a handful of your, oh, I don't know what happened here, but I thought I, oh, I did, I ripped it. So a handful of your lima beans or fava beans, they're frozen right at the bottom. This will make your crispy rice so good. Last night I made three platters of rice for Cinco de Mayo. We celebrated here. The first thing that was gone was the crispy rice over. It was just, everybody was like all over that. And I put potatoes. Mmm, that's so good. Maybe one more minute. I put potatoes on the bottom. You know how I just added the lima beans? I like to do that when I'm making a uh, vegetable or bean rice, I add that vegetable or beans to the bottom. It gets incorporated with your rice and it becomes crispy. 
Yes, the jar. I like to save my jars. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm Use any jars you like. So we're making rice pilaf. We're making, len not lentil, lima bean and dry dill. You can use fresh dill if you like. You can use frozen dill. It's personal choice, I have to tell you. Every time I use frozen dill, my sisters are good at that. My mom is good at that. I can't make it to work. So I prefer dry. That's ready. What we're going to do is dump it. You can Okay, we're going to dump it out. Okay, so this is really so similar to making pasta. What you do is I have my itty bitty rice cooker right here, and I'm going to get the whole thing going together. Let me plug in this rice cooker. The quito y desconecta. Yeah. Y le quito de tapa. Solo de tapa. Y aquí siente. Cuidado. Thank you. Yeah, así siente. We're making deviled eggs. We are busy, busy today in the kitchen. All right. So here is the pot with the lima beans and the dill. And we put almond milk. You can put regular milk. We're trying to be vegan and vegetarian. Now what you do is you scoop up your rice in here. You literally are making a pattern. If you do not have a rice cooker, what I would do is I put it right back in the pot that I just boiled it in. And here's what you do. You layer. You go rice. Yeah, you guys like it when I speak Spanish. Thank you. Sometimes it just comes out naturally without even thinking about it. It's so funny. Sometimes I speak Farsi to Ara, and she looks at me and I go, oh, sorry. <laughs> Babies, good night. Para dormir. The chicks are going to go to sleep. We'll sneak them out later. Now I'm adding a layer of the dry dill over the fava beans or lima beans. You can also use dill and black eyed peas. That's such a good dish. You may also, at this point, if you have cooked chicken or meats, you can layer it in between. Kind of, the canvas is yours. Go at it. Do what you like. Whatever you like. There's a version of this that we have fresh herb, not fresh, but it is frozen. Um, it comes dry also. Herbs, mixed herbs. Shush them, Giselle. Real kitchen, what can I tell you? We're not in the studio. And you can add sauteed or fried fish fillets in there with lots of garlic. Yes, you can substitute, sweetheart. Giselle, no, they want you to no. they want you to play with them, Gigi. No. Maybe they have to go potty. I don't know. I Here we go. And then right about now, right about halfway through, I drizzle a little bit of oil over it. You could do butter, you could do oil. And now we're just layering. Remember, this is so super simple. Layer, layer, layer. And then about an hour and a half of cooking in your rice cooker. Now I say hour and a half. It's the same if it's over the stove. I just like the rice cooker because it has a brain of its own. It shuts off and on, so it controls it. If you're doing it over the stove, you want to maintain a low heat, about an hour and a half, so the bottom becomes nice and crispy. And the steam kind of cooks through everything. All right. 
And I always prefer rice to pasta because it's not processed, right? And it's somewhat healthier. So if I have an option, I kind of always go the rice route. I know, I know. Okay, now, just like when you're making pasta and you wanna make the pasta sauce, you, want, you add a little bit of the pasta liquid, to your dish or your sauce. That's what I'm gonna do here. I have a little bit, no, a little bit of the water from the rice when I boiled it. I'm just adding that to that. A little bit, maybe two tablespoons to that. And then the final layer is going to also be more dill. Now, again, feel free to make this recipe your own and experiment, which means I'm going to add some seasoning to this. Yesterday, I made, I know someone already did. You shouldn't. You can try a little piece. Yesterday, I made the most insane Lentil rice, and I added turmeric, and I added cumin and cinnamon to it. Within each layer, I did that. Um, any any herb cilantro works really well. Hello from Cyprus, I miss you. So I'm going to add a little bit of cumin to the top layer. And this will just kind of become really fragrant and yummy in here. Nothing else though. You don't want to over overpower. The dill is already so fragrant. You don't want to overpower it. There it goes. A little, another small drizzle of avocado oil. We're gonna close the lid and we're gonna pop it in our rice cooker. Right, ah, right here. This rice cooker is my favorite. You guys have seen it. I believe it's National or Aroma also has these. These with these little knobs, they kind of have a built-in timer where they go down and they click and then they go on again. It's very strange, but I love it. I have the other ones that are knobs where you turn to high and it takes an hour and a half. So on those, the knob when it's on high, it's really hot. And what'll happen is if you're, you're not used to this, it'll burn your rice from the bottom if you let it sit too long. So if you have those, kind of play around with it. Don't lay it, leave that for you. Yes, of course I can make amen. Sorry, my Instagram is talking to me. So if you have one of those that are that's uh, like a dial, I like to go once all around from hot and then go middle. Don't go all the way hot again because you're gonna readjust it again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this will cook for about an hour and 15 minutes, and it should be ready to pop out of here. An hour and a half, you might be pushing it, depending on how big and how much rice you have. All right, friends, I hope this is helpful. I will put a picture up for you guys in a minute, too. Happy cooking. Thank you for following, subscribing, commenting, and hitting the notification bell. Okay, that...